Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Shakedown. I'm your host, Mallory G, and here are the most notable and egregious scam events that took place in July. In the middle of the month, popular MLM Beachbody held their annual summit, a conference-like event that closer resembles a Richard Simmons workout on steroids and positive thinking. This isn't just any MLM conference. Sure, it's filled with flashy lights and a big stage and mediocre white men telling a room full of women that their lives can be more fulfilling if they follow the Beachbody lifestyle. But it is also jam-packed with asthma-inducing exercise sessions with your favorite coaches to create a false celebrity experience with coaches that no one knows outside of Beachbody. It's not like you have a coach who says the most adorable and inspirational things like Peloton has with Cody Rigsby, who basically has a TikTok sound for every day of the week. He was the hottest one, okay? And if you think otherwise, you can meet me outside, okay? And as if that wasn't bad enough, it's a weekend full of indoctrination and reinforcing of diet culture. Conferences that are structured this way are dangerous because their participants are encouraged to sink their teeth deeper into their business only for it to financially benefit the people above them, leaving these people not only more in debt, but with reinforced body image and food relationship issues. I highly encourage you to think twice about buying a ticket to any MLM conference and really weigh the cost benefit instead of weighing yourself. In the past few episodes of The Shakedown, we discussed the MLM innovative nutrition that absorbed Perfectly Posh, the punny pampering MLM that sold soap, body washes, lotions, and tried not to be like every MLM. Both of these companies are under the umbrellas of LaCour Enterprises, owned by Terry LaCour, seen here in his headshot submission for Lex Luthor. <laughs> When Innovative absorbed Posh, there was a massive outcry from Posh consultants and customers about massive shipping issues. Here to comment on this story is our Shakedown field correspondent, Jerry from The Warehouse. Jerry, thank you so much for being here today. You're so welcome. It's a pleasure. My pleasure is always giving you some perspectives as I can in my expertise. Yes, Jerry. So give us a rundown of what exactly is going on over there. Why weren't consultants receiving their products? You know, listen, you got to take a look at the bigger picture. Uh, sometimes in an effort to get things out the door, you know, none of these organizations that are MLM are exactly Amazon Prime, if you will. Jeff Beazelbub has it figured out. Zero shipping, all the perks. We're not dealing in that kind of value here. So... Don't come at me with, I can't get my boxes in a timely fashion. Why is shipping triple the price? A business is a business. We got a bottom line. You understand. Well, well you, said, you said shipping is triple the price. What was shipping before this all happened? I think in general, people get used to a certain price point. But listen, you got people involved, trucks involved, fuel, fuel for the trucks involved. You've got services and maintenance and delivery. Listen, five, six bucks, eight bucks, that's for another time, maybe 2012 prices. Shipping today, gonna go up to meet the market and get the things that are weighted the heaviest to the people. $20, $30 minimum. You're saying that people are paying $20 to $30 for shipping on, on soap. That's what we're sold. Now, when's the last time you used any soap that's light as a feather? Think about the weight of it. Think about the muscle and the manpower. No uh, sexism indicated there. I'm just using a euphemism, if you will, manpower to get the product to the people. So we're going to have to up the charges. And I think that's how a smart business would be run to make any revenue. But what if, what if I'm a customer who is just, I just want to buy a lip balm. Lip balms are small. Those can't be that heavy. How would that justify a $20 to $30 shipping cost? Uh, you know what I would say to that? Most of the customers are indeed the reps trying to make a sales business out of these soaps and frilly things. I'm thinking you're ordering the bulk. Get yourself 20, 30 lip balms for the price of shipping. That's economizing it for you. And as a representative of uh, these companies, Buy in bulk. Now you set the price. You go forward and sell to your friends. Uh, that's not really my decision to make, but buy in bulk would be my uh, best advice. 
Well, now, Jerry, though, before these shipping prices increased, though, we were getting reports that the warehouse, your warehouse, was holding all of the product hostage. Why was that happening? I mean, you're going to really sit here and tell me I'm holding things hostage. Now, this is a loaded language. This is a loaded language. I'm doing my best to report. I'm trying to be transparent, okay? And I'm taking lead from my CEO, from the presidents, and it trickles on down. I am not holding packages. I have a process in the warehouse. Every business has a process, and they're gonna ship and charge to the best of the abilities the company can thrive. Hey, guess what? There's no company, there's no reps or customers, period. I understand. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for giving us your perspective on this really important issue. I, I'm sure you have to get back to work, but we'll see you next time we have another thing we need to talk about. Oh, absolutely. I always bring, you know, my best information for you. Unbiased is always unbiased reporting here. Happy to be a part of it. All right. Thanks so much, Jerry. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Barbie Cockpit owner, founder, and CEO of Manipulation Nutrition. I'm here to offer you an amazing new product that is exclusive only through me. I am known for giving world-class trainings to all of the new recruits at Manipulation Nutrition. And I am here to offer it to you for only the low, low cost of $499. Let me ask you a question. Is this you? You've just started a new business and you're really nervous and you don't know how to tell anybody about it. You just stare at your phone wondering, what am I supposed to do? Well, I've got the training for you. Introducing texting. That's the name of the training, texting. In texting, I'm going to teach you how to send messages that will introduce your friends, clients, and random strangers you met on the Las Vegas Strip to your Band-Aid patches filled with vitamins or whatever a crappy product you're selling because if it's not manipulation nutrition, it's probably garbage. I'm going to show you all the different possible responses that you're going to get from a prospective client or recruit and how you can twist and turn their answer into a positive win for you. All you have to do is text me and get over your fear of texting. And then I'm going to say no. And then you're going to have to try and convince me to work with you. That's right. The training starts the minute you text me. So don't hesitate. Text me today. In today's modern society, people all over the world are looking for a side hustle, something to bring in extra money. We discuss this on this channel that multi-level marketing is not a sustainable or even moral option. So what is? What could a person who is down on their luck financially do to earn some extra dollars? Well, in the year of 2022, there are so many options from food delivery services like Grubhub and DoorDash, chauffeur services like Uber and Lyft, creating an online shop on Amazon selling goods, and even more controversially, sex work. Sex work? Ugh, not sex work. I will give a disclaimer now that if you are someone who absolutely will not listen to a discussion about this topic, please skip ahead now. But I really encourage you to stay and listen. Learning about something doesn't make you a sinner. I promise. So, what is sex work? Is sex work simply the act of having intercourse with someone, typically a stranger or client, for the exchange of money? Unfortunately, still to this day, that is what most people think of when they hear the words sex work. But what is it exactly? And why is it such a taboo subject? Sex work is a person's work that involves sexually explicit behavior. Sexually explicit behavior. That doesn't mean intercourse exclusively. So what could it mean? It could mean stripping, escort services, pornography, sexually explicit photos, even photos of your feet. 
Before we dive into why it's so taboo, let's take a look at a little bit of the history of sex, work sex workers in the world. According to Wikipedia, sacred prostitution and similar classifications for females were known to have existed in Greece, Rome, India, China, and Japan. Such practices came to an end when the Emperor Constantine in the 320s AD destroyed the goddess temples and replaced the religious practices with Christianity. In the United States, prostitution was originally widely legal. Prostitution was made illegal in almost all states between 1910 and 1915, largely due to the influence of the Women's Christian Temperance Union, which was influential in the banning of drug use and was a major force in the prohibition of alcohol. In 1917, the prostitution district Storyville in New Orleans was closed down by the federal government over local objections. In Deadwood, South Dakota, prostitution, while technically illegal, was tolerated by local residents and officials for decades until the last madam was brought down by state and federal authorities for tax evasion in 1980. Prostitution remained legal in Alaska until 1953 and is still legal in some rural counties of Nevada, including areas outside of Las Vegas. So, in my opinion, I believe sex work is deemed wrong or taboo because it is associated with sinning in religion. But the Bible speaks of many different stories involving prostitution, but it's not, it does not explicitly condemn it. So our country has deemed it immoral. It has deemed it an immoral act or profession because of their religious beliefs. But what about people who are not religious? What about people who have absolutely no moral connection to the work itself? And this is where the taboo really comes into play. The horror of even discussing it. My mentioning it here is even a risk because someone could decide to attack me for supporting it. But do I support it? I do. But it doesn't matter even if I didn't. It's not the work that I am doing and it is not my place to pass judgment on anyone else for what they believe. And doesn't that same argument work for so many other major issues labeled as the liberal agenda? But let's take a closer look at a type of sex work that is making waves in the anti-MLM community, or rather just a small sect of the community. Selling feet pics. The actual act of selling pictures of your feet on the internet on the surface does not appear to be a sex act. However, it's the simple knowing that there is a huge demand in the fetish community for feet pictures and that those pictures are then sexualized is where the debate comes into play. One comment I received when researching this content was, isn't this just foot modeling? It could be argued that way, but when it's fairly understood what the pictures will likely be used for, it seems that's why it falls under sex work. So why is this even a topic of discussion today? Last week, there was a small wave made on social media in the anti-MLM community on Instagram. I happened upon it purely by accident. Apparently, I still follow one of these creators, and while mindlessly scrolling stories, I stumbled onto part of this mini saga. I was a few drinks in and became hyperfixated on piecing together the sequence of events. For the sake of anonymity purposes, I will be assigning each player in the story a code name. I also will preface that I am in no way trying to start anything, but merely found the unfolding of these events hilarious and absolutely had to share it with you. I also feel that this is a story that would best be delivered by John Oliver, because aren't these stories funnier when told by an intelligent British man? But since his people won't return my calls, I will tell it as a forceful British woman. Because why not? The three main players will be referred to as Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, because why not? It was Gamma's stories that I stumbled on. Gamma was ranting that Alpha was talking about them in their stories. What needs to be understood here is that Alpha and Beta are both relatively significant in their own rights within the anti-MLM community. They have rather large followings and are capable of influencing a large swath of people. 
Gamma, however, is new to the scene and they are considerably smaller platform than Alpha and Beta. Their reach is low, albeit it would appear that the people that do follow them are active and receptive to their content. So, obviously, I went over to Alpha's stories to see what they were saying. Alpha recorded a long story about Gamma, and it was unclear how it all started. So, over to YouTube I went. I don't know what Gamma's initial intention was for posting the two YouTube shorts that they did, but if it was to prove that they can start a tidal wave, they succeeded in doing just that. Gamma's first YouTube short was a screenshot of a business on Facebook that had the same name as a nickname Alpha had adopted. Gamma was insinuating that perhaps Alpha stole this nickname from the original on Facebook. While showing the screenshot from the Facebook business page, a phone number for the business is clearly visible. Alpha made the claim that if it was their own Facebook page, Gamma would have just doxed Alpha. And that took up a solid one to two minutes of stories with that accusation alone. However, showing the phone number of a business is obviously not doxing. Gamma's second story was a screenshot that was circulated of someone's web browser showing Feet Finder as a bookmark. Gamma said, if this gets 100 likes, I will tell you which creator this is. The video got nine likes and barely over 50 views. Whoever watched both of those shorts to report it <laughs> to Alpha clearly told Alpha that both videos were about them because it was clear that Alpha had not watched any of it. To be fair, it could have been interpreted that Gamma was trying to shame the owner of the screenshot, but in my personal opinion, I felt she was attempting to highlight that if any of these creators saw this on an MLM rep's bookmarks, they would have made a snarky comment saying, guess that MLM isn't paying what you expected, or no one told me feet pics were what you meant when you said multiple streams of income. However, that definitely wasn't clear, but also, who cares? Gamma's reach is small. So cut back to Alpha, who is defending feet pics, stating they absolutely wanted to sell feet pics, but their partner wasn't comfortable with it, and then continues to explain that they have eczema on their feet and show pictures of the eczema. Obviously, this is some, also something that I would do because who cares? But what I find absolutely hilarious is that someone or multiple someones told Alpha it was about them. And so they absolutely had to defend themselves. Meanwhile, enter Beta into the arena. Beta records in their stories, raise your hand if you've ever sold pictures of your feet to make money because you are broke, and then raises their hand. Cut back to Alpha. So it would appear that the person who owns the screenshot came forward. So I am off the hook. But it doesn't end there, because then the discussion turned into shaming sex workers, calling Gamma a swerf, which if you are like me and didn't know what on earth that means, stands for sex worker exclusionary radical feminist. Suddenly, other creators in the anti-MLM community started posting pictures of their feet in solidarity with Alpha. Anti-MLM stories were saturated for a few hours with feet pics for free. Ladies, I 100% encourage you to sell pictures of your feet. Take pictures of those beautiful puppies and get paid. But don't give it away for free as part of a movement that no one would have known about had someone not told Alpha the video even existed. My point is, there is always going to be someone on the internet saying something about something. But I believe it is more important to take a step back and say, is this even worth my time and effort? And will anyone even know it happened unless I bring attention to it? And the answer most of the time is no, not at all. But we know that's not how things ever turn out, right? And now, it's time for the monthly segment that we all look forward to, Bitchin' with Bart. Hello everybody and welcome back to Bitchin' with Bart. Sorry that I'm not in the studio, but you know, me and my husband, we were exposed to the COVID. So we just decided it would be best if I just stayed home and did this from my home office, yeah? So today we're going to talk about 
MLM conferences. Now, do you have you been to an MLM conference? Gosh, God darn it, I hope you haven't. But if you have, you sure do know that they are chock full of indoctrination and cult-like activities, and it's just crazy. And they always do them during the summertime. And you know, I love the summertime. I don't know why anybody would want to spend their time at a conference where they're being told that they have a terrible life and they can do better and they will do better if they just invest in this business. You know, when we celebrate summer, me and my husband, Carl, we like to go down to the local pool and, and we just kind of sunbathe and we have a Chaco Taco. Oh, but the, discontinuing the Chaco Taco. Did you hear about that? The Chaco Taco is one of the best things that ever exists. Well, anyhow. I'm off topic. So anyhow, an MLM conference, right? I want you to imagine that you got your nine to five job. Oh, don't say nine to five. <laughs> okay, so you got your nine to five job, right? And they say, hey, hey, Mary Jo, there's a there's a conference that we want you to go to where you're gonna learn so many things that are gonna help you with your job. So all you gotta do is fill out this form so that we know when you're going and how much it's gonna be, and and we're gonna where we're gonna send you there, and we're gonna pay for the ticket to get in, and we're gonna pay for your hotel, and we're gonna give you 75 cents to the gallon, which is the national average for or not the gallon. Oh my goodness, why that would be crazy. 75 cents to the mile, right? 75 cents to the mile, and uh, you know every mile you drive. We're going to give you 75 cents. So when you come back, and we're going to give you a per diem for food too, because we don't want you to pay out of pocket for this. We want you to go learn things about your business. And you know, you have a good time too. When the conference is over, go see a show, go out to the bar. Do whatever you want, right? That's what a normal business is going to do. And it doesn't have to be a nine to five either. It can be any kind of job, really. If there's a conference for that particular field, there's going to be a, a job that's going to send you, okay? So MLM conferences though, they give away tickets for people who earn them. And then if you didn't earn it, they tell you, you have to be there. If you don't care about your business, you don't go to it. But if you go to it, that means you care about your business. You, there's, there's no exception. You got to go. And then they tell you, you got to buy a ticket. And then they tell you, you got to pay your way to get there. And then they tell you that there's going to be merch and you got to buy all these things. By the end of the day, you'll spend like a thousand dollars and all you've done is gone into an arena where they announce the next big product and you scream like it's Justin Bieber. I'm telling you, ain't nobody need to be screaming over shampoo like Justin Bieber. I, I mean, I never screamed over Justin Bieber. I did scream over that Taylor Hansen, though. Oh, do you remember the Hansen brothers? They sing that song back in 1997. Oh, I screamed over them. I love the Hansen brothers. Now, I would go to a conference, and if they showed up, I would scream. But not over shampoo. Not over a protein shake. Not over sweating to beach body classics in a parking lot. Oh, no way. Shanti, I don't care how great your abs are. I'm not screaming over you. You're just a guy who works. I think you're a nice guy. I think you're a really nice guy, but I think you're in a cult. It's a real shame, you know, because like some people like Tom Cruise, but he's a Scientologist and he's like at the top of that cult. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a good person or not. If you're in a cult, you're in a cult. You could, there's pl plenty of great people in cults. You know, but it depends on if you're a leader of the cult or if you're a, a, a person who's a victim. And and I and unfortunately, I think Shanti might be a leader. I don't know. I'm just I'm just hypothetically hypothesizing a hypothenuse. Anyhow, so listen, when you see people talking about their MLM conference, ask them how much it costs to go. OK, say, oh, my goodness, that's amazing that they pay for you to go. And when they go, oh, well, no, you say, oh, how much were the tickets? Oh, they were two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, my goodness. Did they at least fly you down? Well, no, I had to pay for my plane ticket. Oh, my goodness. Plane tickets right now are like four to six hundred dollars, depending on where you're going. Yeah, well, we paid six hundred dollars, but then we had to get the upgrade. So it was seven hundred and fifty dollars total. Oh, my goodness. Well, at least they paid for your hotel and your Uber, right? Oh, no, they didn't do that. Well, what about your food? No, they didn't do that either. Ask them those questions. And then they're going to come back and say, but we got a swag bag. Yeah, okay. All of that money just to get some crap, just to get a lanyard that has your MLM written on it, and maybe a selfie ring light that has Monet or Beach Body or Innovative Nutrition just plastered on the side of it. We don't need your water bottles, okay? I would rather go to Marshall's and buy myself a $20 water bottle that doesn't tell anybody that I'm in a cult. Okay, so listen, my advice to you is one, don't join an MLM. And if you do join an MLM, do not go to the conference. What a waste of your time and your money. So make sure that you keep an eye out for people who are going to these conferences and really pay attention. Thanks so much for joining me because this has been Pitching with Barb.
So we've come to another end of our third The Shakedown episode. Recapping major events or important things that have happened in the month of July. I want to thank you all for being here this month and especially let you know that in this movement of the anti-MLM movement, it is really important that we remember that there are times where we have to take breaks, times where we feel this need, this desire to constantly keep going, keep creating content, keep being present. But I want to remind you that you are not in an MLM anymore. And unfortunately, if you don't make a video this month, if you don't make content this month, if you don't consume content this month, MLMs will still be around. And if you consume all of the content this month and make a ton of videos this month, MLMs will still be around. We are all carrying the banner. We are all working together to make movements, to make waves, to make sure that we take down the multi-level marketing industry together. So take time for yourself. And remember that through kindness, education, empathy, and patience, we can create a lasting movement. So keep calm. And I'll see you next time on The Shakedown.